How's it everyone, Grant here, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I'm gonna be bringing you my long overdue review of the HTC U Ultra. So this review will be based on my usage of the HTC U Ultra for just over a month, so I've gotten to know it very well. We've got a lot to cover, so let's just get right into it. Let's go through some of the key specs. I'll throw some of the detail specs up on the screen for you to read. But the U Ultra comes with a 5.7 inch Super LCD 5 Quad HD 2K display. It's got the Snapdragon 821, the Adreno 530 GPU, for memory, it's got four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of onboard storage with expandable memory. The front camera is a 16 megapixel shooter with ultra pixel technology and capable of shooting up to 1080p video. The rear camera is 12 megapixels with an F over 1.8 aperture. It has optical image stabilization and it can shoot up to 4K video. The battery is 3000 milliamps and supports Quick Charge 3. And it's got all the other HTC audio goodies like boom sound support for Dolby and high res audio, etc. So let's just get right into the review here and we're gonna kick this off with performance. So I'm not sure about you, but if the device does not perform well, if it's not snappy, if it's not fast, does not scroll very smoothly and it lags a lot, I'm not gonna use it. And I'm glad to report here that the HTC U Ultra has none of that. Performance has been very good on this. It's very snappy, fast and fluid performance and moving around the UI. So we can actually go here and open up some apps. So in Twitter, we can see here, Twitter's got a lot of media content, like you can see, and this can bog down some phones, I'm trying to load all that and scroll through it. The U Ultra, no problem, nice, fast, and fluid here. We can switch between apps, go into something like YouTube. Again, very smooth, no real lag issues here. We can try going into something else, and you can see switching between apps is even nice and smooth, Google Plus, which is again, very heavy on the cards and the media and this can slow down and lag some phones. Very nice and smooth here on the U Ultra. Moving between more apps, we can load up Chrome. We can click into some web pages here. So navigation, fast and fluid. Scroll through the article, no problem. Very responsive. So performance overall on the U Ultra, not a problem, nice and smooth. But all I can say for everyday usage, you're not gonna have a problem with the U Ultra like I just showed you. Moving in and out of apps, scrolling, all that is very fast and fluid. Next, let's talk about software. So the U Ultra is running Sense UI, which is HTC skin on top of Android 7.0. We can go into the settings. About phone, you can see there Android 7.0. It's got the February 1st security patch on it. There is your NuGet icon there. And like most of you know, Sense UI is very close to stock Android, which is what I like about it. So if you look at the notification shape and quick toggles, it's very much stock Android here. Like you saw in the settings, this is all looking very much like stock Android. The only thing that it has is this Sense UI skin, which you can mainly see on the lock screen and in the app drawer here. Another thing that I really like about Sense UI is its themes. So it, HTC, like I showed you on my 1A9 review, has a very nice theme store. Lots of nice free themes to choose from. My favorite is the one that I'm running here on the Pixel. I also was running this on my One A9. And HTC has some very deep theming, so customization down to the wallpaper icons all the way down to the font. So lots of themes available. You can see this Pixel wallpaper. You can see a lot of the icons are very much like retro gaming style icons. And they have this permeating throughout a lot of the interface here, all the way down to the font. If you can kind of see here, the font is kind of like a pixel retro gaming type of font, so that's very cool. So themes on the HTC U Ultra with the HTC, HTC theme store is very nice. Other features that I like about Sense is the double tap to wake. So you can double tap to wake from the lock screen, you can double tap to sleep it. And this only works from the lock screen, you cannot double tap to wake, unlock and try to double tap when it's already unlocked, like the LG devices. It's primarily just, or it's only just from the lock screen, double tap to wake, double tap to sleep. It's a very nice feature, especially if you're laying your phone on the table. It does have a fingerprint scanner, but if you don't want to unlock your device and you just want to check your notifications, you can just double tap to light up the screen and see your notifications that way. So other than double tap to wake, another useful gesture that's built into Sense UI on the U Ultra here is the double swipe down to quick access your camera. So other devices allow you to double tap a button, like either the power button or the volume down button to quick launch the camera. That's not available here. I do prefer a double click of a button, but in the absence of that, HTC has provided this double swipe down with your finger on the lock screen to quick launch your camera. So at least there is an option to quick launch that camera, and I do appreciate that. Things that I don't really like about HTC Sense UI, 
is the app drawer and the home screen. I think it should have more options for larger grid sizes. Right now, the largest grid size is going to be 4x5. Uh, as you can see here, the U Ultra has a nice large 5.7 inch display, and there's a lot of spacing between the rolls. If I go into the app drawer here, you can see a lot of wasted space. So if we had some larger grid sizes, we could fit a lot more content on this nice big 5.7 inch display. Another thing that I don't really like about Sense UI, and I think they really should add support for, is one-handed mode. A lot of manufacturers with big devices have the option for one-handed mode, which will shrink the screen down. So it's a lot easier to access the interface when you're trying to operate with one hand. I'm fine without that, but I do know that there's a lot of people who do like that one-handed mode. Uh, maybe you have smaller hands, or you just like to be able to reach it a little bit easier without fully extending your fingers. So just something to keep in mind there. If you like one-handed mode, there is no option for that here on the HTC U Ultra. And the last thing that I want to cover on the software that I don't really like is the Sense Companion. So if you actually go into Sense Companion, you can see it here. It was one of the highly advertised features for the U Ultra, which is HTC's AI. So kind of like their own Google Assistant. And it's supposed to be suggesting things to you based off of your usage. Uh, it should get to know kind of what you do frequently and start suggesting things at the right times. Um, but basically, like you can see here, there are no suggestions for me right now. And it's been like this ever since HTC released it and I downloaded onto the U Ultra here. So pretty much HTC Companion has been useless for me. Uh, it hasn't really provided any useful information. And I really hope HTC can keep improving it so that it actually provides some kind of value. But for now, just stick with Google Assistant and you'll be fine. And so I'm really disappointed in the Sense Companion because like I said, that was one of the big selling features that HTC had when they headlined and released the U Ultra. And of course, no HTC device would be complete without Blink Feed. So a swipe from the left accesses blink feed there it's pretty much just like google now cards where it's aggregating content from different applications like news applications twitter youtube i think even facebook if you give it permissions to all those applications and it'll act sort of like your personal news feed um, i don't personally use this a lot it has gotten a lot better i noticed the content has been getting better i do glance at it every now and then but i really don't find myself using this every day it's not something that i find terribly useful but it is something that HTC has still kept incorporated into Sense UI. So moving on to display, like I said before, the HTC U Ultra has a large 5.7 inch Quad HD 1440p Super LCD 5 display. This is the same display technology that's found on other HTC devices like the HTC 10. The HTC 10 also had a Super LCD 5 display. It just was a smaller 5.2 inch display versus this large 5.7 inch display. And I really liked that Super LCD 5 on the HTC 10 and it's no different here on the U Ultra. So the colors are very vibrant and punchy for an LCD display. So if you like LCD displays because you like their cooler, more natural tones, out of the box, the HTC U Ultra is gonna be a lot more punchy, a lot more vibrant, a lot more like AMOLED displays. So if you like AMOLED displays for its vibrancy, the punchy colors, you're gonna like this Super LCD 5. You can go ahead and adjust that in your display settings. You can go to color temperature, and you can make it warmer or you can make it cooler. So if you want like that cooler display, you can adjust it here. Moving on to brightness, it definitely gets bright. It's not the brightest, but it's still pretty good. I still think Samsung Super AMOLED displays get the brightest, but this Super LCD 5 display on the U Ultra is definitely no slouch. Uh, indoors without too bright of light, I can use it with less than 50% like you see here on the camera, and it's perfectly fine. If I crank the brightness all the way up, it gets pretty bright here like you can see into the camera there and you notice I do not have adaptive brightness on we can take a look at that here brightness level automatic brightness is not on and that really changes the brightness level of the display some phones it doesn't do much other phones it's very dramatic and if I go to automatic display automatic brightness you can see here that I have to start cranking up the brightness a lot higher even indoors so I would suggest taking auto brightness off and it'll get very, very bright. Indoors into some slightly brighter light, like at my office, I have my brightness cranked up to about 60 to 70%, but still I don't have to worry about brightness and visibility and having to crank it all the way up indoors, even into some brighter light. Outdoor visibility is just fine. It's not gonna be the best, but you're not gonna be straining to view the screen. You will have to crank up the brightness all the way up to 100% if you want to view the display directly into sunlight, but that's gonna be pretty much any device. And while it won't be the brightest, it'll definitely not be a problem reading the display into some direct sunlight. 
The HTC U Ultra also comes with Gorilla Glass 5, and a lot of people are saying that Gorilla Glass 5 scratches a lot easier, and I'm not experiencing any scratching on my U Ultra display here. I have not used any kind of screen protector or tempered glass, and I do not have any scratching. I don't baby my devices, but I do take care of them. I keep a case on them when I'm going on and about. I put it in my pocket by itself. I don't put any kind of keys or anything else that could possibly scratch it. So I do take care of the device, but I don't really baby it. I'm not always worrying about it. And like I said, no screen protector, no tempered glass, and I'm still not seeing any scratches on this display. So your mileage may vary with scratching, but for me, I, I'm not having any kind of an issue. Now let's talk secondary display because it is one of the big features on the HTC U Ultra. 5.7 inch main display, two inch secondary display up top to show additional information. And let's get this out of the way. It definitely is a ripoff of the LG V20 secondary display. But let's go through the different functionality of the secondary display. I'll tell you what I like and what I don't like about it. So first things first, what you're seeing here is the reminder. So if I tap and hold on that, this is nothing more than freeform text. I can type out anything that I want here and it'll show up there. So they call it personal reminder. It's a little bit misleading because there's nothing more than freeform text. You can type in some customization, like I've got my Twitter handle there. You can put whatever you want and that's gonna display right there on the secondary display. So it used to be right aligned, but after they released an update to the secondary display, it became left justified. I don't really like that as much. I wish they kept it right aligned. Minor gripe, but just something to note there. It also show calendar appointments and you can put in quick shortcuts to contacts that you contact frequently. As you can see there, you tap on one, it'll have quick access to the phone or to message that person. Next we've got, you can control your music. So any kind of music that's currently playing, you'll get access to the music play settings there. Play, pause, fast forward, skip back. will all be at the top there. Here it's got some weather and this isn't particularly useful to me and this is not customizable. This is just gonna be the default weather view that you're gonna see here. It's weather by the hour. Not particularly helpful. I wish it would just have the maybe the high and low and the current temperature. I think that would be particularly useful, but I already have a widget on my main display. Not a big deal, but again, I don't really find that useful and again, not customizable. This screen will have access to shortcuts to your applications and this is pre-programmed. So if you just tap and hold, you're allowed to customize which apps you want in that position. And it's not like the V20, where the V20 would put your most recently used apps and they would always just change as you change, as your recent apps change. I kind of like that because those are the apps I'm using currently and I can just quickly toggle between them. Uh, but these are just static and you just have to pre-program them in. I like the recent apps functionality a little bit better. You may not, but just something to note there. Other things about the secondary display is when you turn the main display off, you have it set on a table. The Secondary display is not going to light up all the time like the LG V20. So like the V20 here, the secondary display has an option to keep it on. So I can always see it. I'll have access to my date, time, and any notifications that come in all from that secondary display without having to activate it. So when notifications come in on your U Ultra, it will display and activate the secondary display, which is fine, but you don't have glanceable information with the main screen off. You can double tap the secondary display to activate it. And this brings up a minor gripe here that other people have probably pointed out too, is that this time here is gonna be military time, so 24 hour format, and that is not customizable. Um, I personally don't like that. I wish they had the option to configure that, but you can't do that. And that's gonna be the standard view there. So another way to activate your secondary display when your main display is turned off, you can pick up the device, and you'll activate the secondary display that way. And lastly, notifications are also displayed up in your secondary display. So instead of having them hover over some of the content on your main display, they will show up and notify you here in the secondary display. So if you're doing something using your device, you don't like how the notifications pop up and overlay over it, but you still wanna see the notification, it'll pop up in that secondary display instead. So it won't bother you from what you're doing currently on the device. I do like that. And like I said, HTC released an update not too long after the release, which brought some functionality to customizing your secondary display. And that update allows you to customize which notifications you get in that secondary display. So you can go ahead and select them all or select only the applications you want to have notifications pop up in that second display. 
Overall, personally, I'm kind of indifferent to the second display. It provides some functionality that's useful. I like the app shortcuts probably the most. So if I'm using the device, I don't actually have to hit my recents button to go and toggle between some applications like this. I can just go ahead and tap on the application that I want to access and it's there. So a little bit easier to toggle between some applications. I like that feature, but overall I'm a little bit indifferent to the secondary display. I would have been fine if HTC had chosen to just extend out the main display and give us a six inch main display. Moving on to design and build quality, which has always been HTC's trademark. They're well known for solid builds, sturdy designs, and the HTC U Ultra is no exception. Yes, it's a very big device, but given that it has a 5.7 inch main display with a two inch secondary display, it's expected to be big. It's just a bit taller than the similar V20, which also has a 5.7 inch display with a secondary two inch display up top. So very comparable in size to the V20, just a little bit taller. It's also very close to traditional six inch devices, like something like the Z Max Pro there. That's a six inch, six inch device. And the Ultra compares fairly favorably to that or to something like a 5.9 inch display on a Mate 9. The Ultra is just slightly taller than that. So it definitely is a phablet. It definitely is a big device, but it really is meant to be. And the overall in-hand feel will vary depending on the size of your hands. So for me, in-hand feel is good, but make no mistake, it is a big device. I cannot wrap my hand fully around it, but it does feel good for a big device. It's got that slightly curved back, which does help fit into the hand, not as curved as the HTC 10, but it is slightly curved. I would have liked it to have a slightly more curve to the back to help curb that in-hand feel. But still for a very big device, I'm gonna say it feels pretty good in my hand because to me, this is pretty thin. And overall weight of this phone is quite light. Not super light to the point where it feels cheap, but it is definitely lighter than I thought it would feel. And I think that's probably because it does not have a all metal back. So that just adds to the nice comfort to holding the phone, especially over extended usage, which you will probably do given that on a very big device, you're gonna to wanna to consume a lot of media. You're gonna to wanna to be playing a lot of games. You're gonna to wanna to be holding on to this thing for a while. So having shedding a little bit of the weight of the aluminum definitely will help with some of that. Now the buttons, I love HTC's trademark beveled power button there. Very nice for helping locate the power button. Buttons on the volume is very clicky and tactile, if you can hear that. And let me shine this up really quickly. Yes, you're gonna to have to carry around a shine cloth because of this glass back, but that's true of all glass devices. So let's talk about this. This is a very unique design. It's one of the eye-catching features of the HTC U Ultra, especially if you get it in this sapphire blue. I call it my electric blue color because to me that's what it looks like. It is definitely stunning and it definitely is a head turner, something that people are gonna notice. And even I catch myself just staring at this thing reflecting into the sun or the sky or anything else because it is very much like a mirror-like finish. So as much as the design is a fingerprint magnet and can be very difficult at times to keep clean, when I'm out and about I have a case so it's not as big of a deal. But damn if this is not a very gorgeous beautiful looking device. And last thing in design and build is gonna be the fingerprint scanner. So you can see it here at the bottom. It's not a physical button, it is just a scanner. So if you just rest your finger on it, it'll unlock the phone. And not the fastest, but more than fast enough, like you can see, and it's very accurate. So that's all you can really ask for in a fingerprint scanner. It works, it's not really slow, and it pretty much works all the time. So fingerprint scanner, nothing negative to say there. The only thing that I'll say is that I don't really like the vibration motor as much on the U Ultra, It's very much more like a buzz, so if you can hear that, I'll hold it up to my microphone. You can even hear it, it's a very loud buzz, it's a very jolting buzz, it's not a very subtle one like on some other phones, and so that's my, probably the one thing I don't like, I don't like the haptic feedback on this. It's a little bit too harsh, a little bit too much of that harsh kind of buzz versus a more moderate or subdued one. Also, like I've also said about the HTC 10, it's the same kind of scanner there and the same kind of capacitive light up buttons there. And as you can see, the fingerprint scanner and the capacitive buttons, let's just activate them there, are more towards the bottom and they're not center aligned. And so that's the one minor gripe that I had about the HTC 10 and it's still here on the U Ultra. I really wish it would center it within this bottom bezel, but for some reason they had to put it more towards the bottom. That may bother some people, but I'm used to the positioning now. I don't really miss the buttons at all, or not as often as other people have been complaining about. 
So it's not a big deal for me. It's just aesthetically, I would have liked it to have been a little bit more centered. So let's talk about battery life. So like I said at the top, the HTC U Ultra comes with a 3000 milliamp hour battery. That is the same size battery capacity that can be found on the much smaller 5.2 inch HTC 10. And when the HTC U Ultra was announced with a 3000 milliamp hour battery, a lot of people had a lot of concerns and a lot of people really blasted the HTC U Ultra for having too small of a battery and not great battery life. And I'm not gonna lie, the battery capacity was definitely a concern for me coming into it when I heard the announcement and I heard the, the battery size that they're gonna pack into this thing. It was definitely one of the concern areas that I was gonna pay attention to when I got the device. And I'll just say that for me, I'm not really caring about screen on time or any of that kind of stuff. For me, a good battery is a battery that gets me through my day. It can get me through my morning, my work day, my night without having to charge it without even having to think about do i have to charge this just worry free all day usage all the way until i put it on the charger and so for me that's usually 6 a.m 7 a.m in the morning all the way through about midnight at night if it gets me through that time period without having to put it onto the charger or even have to worry about it getting too low am i gonna have to put it on the charger peace of mind that's what i look for in a battery and i can say that that's true here of the hcc ultra for my usage it gets me through my day. I'm not really worried about battery or having to plug it in at all. And so good enough for me to get me through that kind of a day because you know, for five days a week I'm at work, is usually about three to four hours of screen on time and that's usually fine for me. Really great for me is six plus hours of screen on time. And on the U Ultra, I'm getting three and a half to four and a half hours of screen on time depending on how hard I use the device. And that's actually the same screen on time that I was getting on the HTC 10. So same battery capacity, and I'm getting about the same screen on time and usage out of the U Ultra battery. And that's saying something because the U Ultra is actually a bigger display, has more pixels to push, and some of that could just be in the optimization that HTC did. It could be due to some of the fact that the Snapdragon 821 on this device is underclocked to the same speed as the Snapdragon 820. And it could also be that Snapdragon 821 that has that slightly improved efficiency. I think they said something like a 5% improved efficiency over the 820. So some factors where you would think the 3000 milliamp hour battery should get you worse battery life and screen on time than the HTC 10. I'm getting the same battery life, the same screen on time here. And for anybody interested in charge times, it took about an hour and 15 minutes to reach 90%. So that's not too bad. So just think about that. It's a smaller battery capacity, but if you have to plug it in, it does support Quick Charge 3.0, and it does charge up pretty fast. Like I said, an hour and 15 minutes to 90%, and I think about a full hour and a half, maybe to 100%. So it charges up quick because it's a smaller capacity battery. So if, you really need, if you're really in a pinch and you need to charge it up fast, it can do that for you. So now let's move on to talking about the camera. So I've done a lot of videos with some camera samples on the HTC U Ultra by itself. I've also done some co camera comparison videos. So you can go take a look at those videos if you want to see a lot more photos and video. But the U Ultra comes with a 12 megapixel rear camera with Ultra Pixel 2 technology that helps in low light situations. It actually has the Sony IMX378 sensor in it, which is the same sensor as the Google Pixel. It has larger size pixels at 1.55 microns, also to help with low light performance. It has a wide aperture of f over 1.8 and optical image stabilization built in. So all those things should really translate to great low light performance and it is a pretty good performer in low light. I'll show you some samples. The front main camera here is a 60 megapixel shooter. It's capable of shooting at 1080p video. It's got ultra pixel mode as well, which will take pictures at four megapixel resolution, but it'll take it with larger size pixels and that'll really help with low light selfie photo performance. The ultra pixel technology is also supposed to be four times more sensitive to light versus the standard 16 megapixel mode, and it does work. I showed it in some of the camera samples in my camera sample video for the Ultra, so you will check that out. So if you're shooting in low light, I suggest you turn on ultra pixel mode because it does make a difference. The one gripe that I'm gonna have about the rear camera here is that there still is no 1080p 60 frames per second option. So the HTC 10 was missing that, and it's still missing here on the Ultra, and that's a big omission on a flagship phone. Flagship phones should be capable of shooting in all kinds of resolutions, from 1080p at 30 to 1080p at 60 frames per second all the way up to 4k so missing that 60 frames per second option is kind of key especially for a lot of content creators they like shooting at 60 frames per second and i think that's a big omission here by hdc i really hope hdc listens and puts 60 frames per second recording back into the camera in their next release so hdc you really got to get us that 60 frames per second option
So that's gonna be one of my only gripes about that camera. I think the U Ultra is a clear step up for HTC and it takes really beautiful pictures and great macro shots with a very quick autofocus. And videos come out looking really good with great color reproduction and crisp audio. So if you're recording audio on this thing, it's got four mics all over this thing and the audio comes out very crisp. I just think directional audio is not very good. So if you're doing videos with the front facing camera of yourself and you want it to pick up your voice more prominently over the background noise, it won't really do that. It treats your, that subject's voice along with the background sounds fairly equally. So what you'll get is a very well balanced sound and a very crisp tones, but the background noise does have a chance of interfering with the speaker's voice. So that's probably the one downfall that I don't like about the audio. Other than that, it's a very crisp audio, very nice sounding audio. I just wish it would do directional audio a little bit better. That being said, I really enjoyed using the U Ultra cameras. And while they have not been perfect, it's definitely a step up for HTC. I'm very happy that HTC was able to step up their camera game. I was very skeptical about that. I did not think that the U Ultra camera would be very good after my experience with the HTC 10. So kudos to HTC. The camera in this thing for both photos and video has been very impressive. So now let's talk audio. The U Ultra does come with boom sound in its external speakers just like the HTC 10 where it has the same setup where you've got one speaker in the earpiece and one bottom firing speaker here. So we can take a quick listen to see what it sounds like. And we'll turn it all the way up. I'll put it by the mic. So it definitely gets loud. I think it's a little bit louder than the HTC 10 does, but not quite as rich. And I think I would like that little bit of richness back. I mean, you're not gonna get a whole lot from cell phone speakers because they're so tiny. But as far as smartphone speakers go, these are pretty good. And like I said, if you like the HTC 10 speakers, you're gonna like this one. It's a little bit louder, but just not quite as rich. So now let's talk about internal audio. And this is where things get a little bit confusing and a little bit tricky. So the HTC Ultra does not come with a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Top, bottom, there is none. It only comes with this USB type C port. And HTC is nice enough to give us some USB type C headphones here in the box. So very nice ones at that. You can see some HTC branding there. And they're pretty thick, they can see here. So these are very good quality earbuds. And when you plug them in, they do sound very good. If you plug them into the USB-C port here, you'll see that it activates HTC U-Sonic. So if we hit that, basically what this is, is it'll create a sound profile by putting, emitting a pulse into your ears and kind of mapping out your ear canals and try to personalize the sound to your ear profile. So that actually works. It does make a little bit of a difference. You can hear it. If anything, it's a little bit more of an EQ type of sound where it boosts the music profile there. And you can definitely tell when it's on and when it's off. So USonic technology definitely works. It gives a little bit more kick to the music. And these earbuds are a very nice inclusion. It's a little bit more bass heavy than top heavy. Not super bassy, obviously, because they're just earbuds, but it's gonna lean towards more of the low tones, at least for my ears. It does have a microphone and a inline control there. So it is a nice pair of earbuds that HTC includes with this, given that there is no traditional three and a half millimeter headphone jack. So now what if you want to use your own set of headphones that do have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack because you like it, maybe they're more expensive, they sound a lot better than these earbuds, or you wanna use a nice set of over the ear cans that you've got. So here's where it gets a little bit tricky. I did have another third party three and a half millimeter to USB type C adapter. This does not work. So plugging this into the U Ultra, you'll see this message come up, accessory not supported. And so even if you plugged in some headphones into this end, you wanna play some music, it's not gonna recognize it. You're not gonna hear anything coming out of it. Another option is just to get your own set of aftermarket USB type C earbuds or headphones. So these, these are some aftermarket earbuds here. Recommendation from Jay Will, so go check out his videos on this one. And you can see that USB type port at the bottom. This is in Soko, so if you wanna go check out Jay, Will, Jay Williams' channel, look up this in Soko, you'll see his review of that there. But this does work if I went and plugged this into the bottom of the U Ultra here. This will actually work and I can actually, USB device connected, you can just ignore that if I, play you can hear some music coming out of here so you can see that there so third-party USB type C headphones do work but if you really want to use your own headphones with a three and a half millimeter headphone jack 
you're going to have to make an extra $11 investment into the official HTC 3.5 millimeter to USB type C adapter. So you can see the HTC branding over there, 3.5 millimeter to USB type C. So this is the only adapter that's going to work with the HTC U Ultra and for the matter the HTC Bolt or the Evo 10, same situation. Only HTC's adapter will work if I plug this in. What I noticed when I first plugged this in, it actually installed a firmware update. So that firmware update is what allows this USB Type-C adapter to be recognized and to be used on the U Ultra. So that's the secret sauce. That firmware update is the secret sauce to make these adapters work. Only the HTC one will install that and, and, and it'll only work with this HTC based adapter. So you're going to have to purchase it from HTC for 11 bucks plus pay the shipping. So it's going to be closer to $20 US. And this is really an accessory that should have been included in the box by HTC, Apple, Motorola, everybody else who ditched the headphone jack included the adapter in the box. HTC, especially since this is a proprietary connector, you really should have included in the box. That being said, if I go ahead and plug in my headphones, as you can see, it's very large because these are some pretty awesome headphones here by Fostex. So these are the cans that I really like to listen to music with at home. And the good news is that the U Ultra is able to drive these headphones. So if I play it, I'll bring the headphones next to the microphone. You can hear it there. So the U Ultra definitely has an internal DAC or digital analog converter that is capable of driving nice headphones like that. I'm not sure if it's the same DAC that's in the HTC 10. But I'm going to assume it's probably the same DAC that's enabled with the Qualcomm chipset. And that turns out to be a really great one because the HTC 10 has great audio with headphones. And with this adapter, the Ultra does too. I think it gets very loud. Again, I don't think the audio is quite as rich as the HTC 10, even with headphones. So, but it's very close. And if I didn't compare side by side, I may not notice it as much. But comparing them side by side, the HTC 10 sounds better to me with headphones. It also sounds better with its built-in speakers. But the U Ultra is a very close second, and if you like the HTC sound signature that's found on the HTC 10, you are not going to be disappointed with the HTC U Ultra. So now let's briefly talk about calling and messaging because it is a phone after all. And calls sound nice and clear both ways. No real issues with SMS or MMS, but again, call quality and being able to send messaging and all that is going to be dependent partially upon your service provider. I've got T-Mobile here in Northern California and wherever I get good T-Mobile signal, I'm not really having any problem with call quality. People don't have any issues hearing me. So I think call quality, as long as you have a good signal, like most phones or all phones, you're not going to have any problem with that. The things that I will call out is that it does not have voice over LTE support or Wi-Fi calling. So if those two things are important to you. It's not here on the U Ultra. And by Wi-Fi calling, I really mean this because I've gotten some comments in some other videos that they don't understand what Wi-Fi calling. I'm not talking about voice over IP and third-party apps where you can call other people on applications like WhatsApp. I'm talking about the actual built-in Wi-Fi calling where you can actually use calling over Wi-Fi through your carrier number. So being able to pull up the phone, dial through your phone dialer and have that go over your carrier line over Wi-Fi that is not supported here on this device. Some people heavily depend on that on other devices. So I just wanna call that out, voice over LTE and Wi-Fi calling through your carrier number, not supported on the U Ultra. And the last other bits to call out are some of the lifestyle features or convenience features, things like wireless charging. It has a glass back. I think a lot of people were expecting wireless charging. The whole point of going to glass is so you can provide features like that. So this does not support wireless charging. I think a lot of people were disappointed in that. I personally don't really care. Uh, wireless charging is a nice convenience, but even fast charging, wireless charging like Samsung's fast wireless charging doesn't charge as fast as if you were to plug this in to a, to a charging cord. But I do get the convenience factor. Some people have wireless chargers all around their house or maybe at work and they just want to dump it onto the charger without having to fumble with wires or by your bedside. I do get that convenience feature. So if you really like wireless charging, it's not here on the U Ultra. And the other kind of lifestyle feature is water resistance. So high IP certifications like IP68, which is virtually waterproof, where you can actually submerge the device into about five and a half feet of water for 30 minutes. That is not here on the Ultra. I believe it's something like IP53 or 55 certified, which most phones are. And all that really means is that it can take drops of water. So if you 
run through the rain with it, things like that. If you get splashes of water on it, you're not going to have to worry about frying your device. So it's, well, not water resistant and not to a high degree. There is some water resistance in there here, like most phones today. You don't have to worry about getting some light rain or if I got it wet because I'm doing some dishes and I splash some water on it, you should be fine there. So just to recap a lot of the pros and the cons, the good and the bad, let's start with the pros, what I really liked. Again, the pros to me are that it's very fast and fluid performance. It's got a nice light software experience. It's very close to stock Android. It's really got that really nice, stunningly shiny glass back with a very sturdy build construction. It's got a nice display with bright, vibrant colors. A very good camera, even in low light. The boom sound speakers on this thing are loud and they have great headphone audio and performance there. And it does give me all day battery life. It's not as much battery life as other phones, sure, but it definitely gets through me through my day and I can't say that of all phones. Now some of the things that I didn't like and some of the, what I see are as cons. The launch price of $750, I definitely agree with a lot of people that that is definitely probably too high for HTC. The things that were concerning me when I first heard about it were number one, the high price tag, the camera, which has actually turned to be very good, and the smaller capacity battery, which has been just fine. But that launch price of $750 is a very much a deterrent to a lot of people in exploring HTC and buying their devices, especially because they're not found in carrier stores, at least not here in the US. Um, not having carrier financing, not having that exposure into brick and mortar stores uh, like a Best Buy or any electronic store is a real hindrance. And so if people can't see it, feel it, touch it, or finance it, they're not going to really get over that high price tag. Yes, the Ultra can be found for probably as low as $600 now if you look around the internet. And that's a more acceptable price, but that launch price, I think, was a real con and probably a big deterrent for a lot of people. Other cons is that the software is really not meant for a big device like this. So you don't have one-handed mode. The grid options here are not large enough. You could fit more content onto this large display. So the software is not really optimized. Sensi-wise, it's really not optimized for a large 5.7 inch display like this. Other cons is that third-party headphone adapters won't work. You're gonna need this HTC proprietary headphone adapter. Again, no Wi-Fi calling, no wireless charging, and no water resistance. I know that's a big deal for people and a lot of other flagship expensive phones have those features. And so those are a few extra cons there for the Ultra. So it'll be up to you to determine if the pros outweigh the cons that I had highlighted. For me, it definitely does. I really like the Ultra. I think it is a worthwhile pickup if people would just give it a chance. But again, if you have any other questions or comments or anything else that I had missed that you have questions on, leave them in the comment section. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.